What's up, guys? Carolina Jackpot coming at you. It is October 22nd, 2020. That means it's Thursday evening, and it's time for Picks Against the Spread for week number eight of the college football season. Got 20 games on tap here. Ready and anxious to see if uh, I can improve on last week's uh, uh, kind of abysmal performance. I took it on the chin last week. And those picks against the spread going 7 and 11. I had 20 games picked out, but only 18 of them ended up getting played. So hopefully this will be a bounce back week and we'll see something more along the lines of the 13 and 7 record posted in week number 6. Before I go any further, I'd like to ask you to please hit the thumbs up on this video. Subscribe to the Carolina Jackpot channel if you're not subscribed already. Click the little bell uh, so you'll get the notifications whenever Carolina Jackpot drops a new college football video. I would appreciate it. All right, jumping into uh, Big Ten action. We got the Big Ten and the uh, Mountain West uh, beginning play this week. I don't think we got any Mountain West games uh, to pick on here. So I'm sorry if you're a, a fan of the uh, Mountain West Conference or a team in the Mountain West Conference, but we just kind of go with uh, you know, the regional favorites, I guess, and uh, the bigger names uh, in the country. Uh, of course, we do have some uh, non-Power 5 games on here as well, but uh, kind of uh, try to keep it uh, more uh, this side of the Mississippi River uh, if we can, just because of the fact that uh, Carolina Jackpot, I don't know that we've exactly gone nationwide yet. But never fear. We'll throw some Pac-12 games in there, too, uh, when they get started up, because they are interesting. All right. Uh, Illinois on the road at Wisconsin. This is a Friday night game. Uh, Wisconsin is laying 19 and a half in Camp Randall Stadium. Um, I think this is a little bit too big of a spread here. Uh, Illinois is returning some decent skill position talent. They did have some opt-outs, uh, but Wisconsin's going to be uh, starting a new quarterback. Uh, there is no Jonathan Taylor there anymore. Uh, sure, that uh, offensive line will be good. Normally is uh, at Wisconsin, but 19 and a half just seems like uh, a lot of points uh, against the team that beat you last year um, and uh, returns some talent. So, and I already screwed that one up. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. Uh, I'm going to take Illinois there to cover the spread uh, against Wisconsin. I messed up because I don't have my magic marker that I normally use. I don't know where I left that damn thing. All right, Alabama on the road at Tennessee. Tennessee's catching 21 at home. And the underdog uh, deserves a look this year uh, almost every time uh, you're uh, – Playing a game, uh, you need to look at that underdog and look at it hard. If it has value, uh, I'd go on ahead and take it because they're they're covering more often than they're not. But in this one, I just don't see the value in it. Uh, I, I can't see anybody laying those points with uh, Tennessee right now. Um, a lot of upheaval in Knoxville. Uh, who's going to be the starting quarterback in this game? We don't know. Uh, is it going to be Jarrett Guarantano or are they going to give it to uh, – JT Shroud, is it going to be Harrison Bailey? Who's going to start for Tennessee? Um, you know, you got uh, the linebacker, Henry To'o To'o, uh, just putting pictures up on his Instagram of Harrison Bailey, you know, kind of hinting at the fact that, hey, coach, uh, why can't we start this guy, bro? Uh, to me, that's just uh, – that's not good for a locker room. And Tennessee seemed to have these kind of problems, not just with Jeremy Pruitt. They also had them in the Butch Jones era as well. Um, I can't back them in this situation. Uh, Alabama uh, looked impressive on uh, last Saturday. And, you know, sometimes you'll have a bit of a letdown. I, I just don't think so. I don't think a team – like Alabama, a Nick Saban coach team, uh, is you're going to see that type of stuff that often. Um, I think he keeps them pretty disciplined, uh, and I think they cover the spread here, giving me the Crimson Tide to win big, run the Tennessee Vols out of their own stadium, and um, it's not going to be close. Uh, Georgia Tech on the road at Boston College. Boston College is laying three and a half at home, 
I think BC is probably uh, the right way to go here. Um, aside from last week's game against Virginia Tech, you really just couldn't get anything going there. Um, they've looked pretty good. They've looked pretty solid. And uh, three and a half points, not a lot at home uh, against the Georgia Tech team that just they couldn't do anything right um, last Saturday. And I know that it's the Taters that they were playing, but still, I mean, 73 to 7. Come on, man. Come on. Take Boston College there. Auburn on the road at Ole Miss. Ole Miss is catching three and the hook in Oxford. Um, both teams coming off of loss last week. Um, kind of, I guess you would say, upset losses. Uh, I would think the Arkansas beating uh, Ole Miss um, was a little bit bigger of an upset than Auburn uh, losing to the South Carolina Gamecocks. Um, and neither one of these teams especially looked great last week. But I think that that Ole Miss defense is just soft enough uh, that Bo Nix may be able to redeem himself a little bit from the uh, bad performance he had against the Gamecocks. The Gamecocks defense, obviously, much better than Ole Miss defense. And uh, three and a half points uh, on the road. Uh, I think Auburn is the better team here all around their team. Maybe not better uh, offensively, but certainly I think a little bit better uh, defensively than Ole Miss. And... Um, I think they come up with just enough here, just enough gas to get this thing across the finish line. Uh, Ole Miss, still, they're still in transition a little bit, still in transition a little bit uh, under Lane Kiffin. So I'm going to take Auburn uh, to cover that three and a half on the road and kind of bounce back just a little bit. Uh, Kansas on the road at Kansas State. K-State is uh, laying 20 at home against Kansas. Um, I can't back Kansas. Uh, even though they were able to put some points up on West Virginia last week, actually got ahead of them 10 0 uh, before West Virginia came storming back, and they ended up winning 38 17. Didn't quite cover the uh, 22 in the hook uh, spread in that game, but still, I mean, had they not fallen apart or, or fallen behind early, I should say, they would have covered that game uh, with ease. Uh, here, I think K State. Um, covers. Um, they're not really uh, doing a whole lot to impress me this year either. Um, but I think Kansas probably had their one one good quarter of football <laughs> for the year of 2020. And it may be, may be an over for them. But now, um, as you hear, we have some popcorn popping in the background. Syracuse, uh, the orange, is on the road at Clemson. Syracuse is laying, or no, excuse me, they're catching 46 at Clemson. Uh, I, I don't know, you know, this conventional wisdom here tells me not to take Clemson in this game. I mean, they just blew out Georgia Tech by 66 points. And 46, that's a that's an awful lofty number to uh, have to try to cover against a team that gave you a tough time a couple years ago that beat you uh, three years ago. So they have a bit of a history with Clemson. Uh, last year the game wasn't close. And yeah, I'll bet the team that uh, beat Clemson a few years ago was not quarterback by Trevor Lawrence. They're not losing to Syracuse, okay? I mean, they have like a – Syracuse has like a point – five percent chance of winning one of the uh the radio uh show hosts in the upstate south carolina here uh predicted the final in this one to be 83 to zero and he was being dead serious i don't think it's that and i don't even think clemson i don't think they cover this 46 I, and that's that's a lot of points it's just too much it's too many i think that um this could be like a 45-7 type game. Uh, Syracuse don't have a lot uh, as far as on offense um, to throw at Clemson. But, you know, I think that also you have um, 
the 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 little there's a little friendship not not really friendship but a common respect that's developed between Dino Babers and Dabo Sweeney. I don't know that Dabo will really try to run it up on uh, Dino Babers. They're going to get a lot of people into the game here, and a lot of them will be playing you know early in the third quarter. You know he didn't have as many people to take the Georgia Tech uh, as they had to take. Uh, or the, all they will have here at home uh, against Syracuse. So you can see some even more lower-level guys from the Clemson team get some action uh, in the third and fourth quarter and, you know, maybe you know be, not be quite as productive uh, as you would be if you were playing on a road situation where you're just mainly playing second- and third-string guys because you don't really have – you don't have that much depth to take on the road. So I'm going to take Syracuse to cover here. And I think it's like just barely. I mean, it could be 48-7, 45-7, uh, you know, 48-10, something along those lines, uh, 51-10, somewhere they could just, you know, barely get in under the 46 points. Uh, I mean, you know, make no mistake, it's not going to be close. Florida State on the road at Louisville. Uh, Louisville's laying five at home uh, against Florida State. Louisville looked decent last week. Um, defensively uh, against Notre Dame. A lot of that had to do with the fact that Notre Dame was just in up on offense. Uh, but Louisville only managed to put up seven points themselves. Uh, and, I mean, this is just a tale of uh, two one-and-three teams. That Florida State being one-and-three right now, I don't really know that that's that much of a surprise to everybody. Uh, but Louisville being one-and-three is. Uh, they were uh, – Picked by a lot of people to maybe, you know, finish like second or third, anywhere from second to fifth in the ACC is what I saw. But definitely, you know, up there in the in the upper third of the conference, and they have just not been it. They have not. They, their defense doesn't stop anyone. And uh, I don't see them being able to stop Florida State here. You know, Jordan Travis, uh, the, the dual threat quarterback who, you know, has given them a, a boost, given them a shot in the arm. I think that win over North Carolina last week was huge for them. I didn't like the way the defense played in the second half. They gave up, uh, you know, some points and yards there, and um, made that thing ended up being really scary. But they did hold North Carolina, uh, who had a first down right there at the end of that game, you know, forced by like three straight incompletions, and um, they were able to get the victory, 31-28, um, so, you know, I don't think you'll see a letdown. I think it, uh, this momentum will carry forward a little bit. I mean, Louisville just happened to look good. And um, I'm going to take Florida State here, cover this number. I think that's the right way to go. Temple on the road at Memphis. Memphis a 13-and-a-half point favorite. Uh, home against Temple. This Temple team has played some really close games uh, with Navy and uh, South Florida. I think that's the only – two games they played. Uh, they got kind of a late start um, uh, in, relative to everyone else in the uh, American Athletic Conference. Uh, Memphis, of course, coming off the 50-49 to 49 win over UCF. Uh, I think Memphis is the right side here. Uh, you know, just, just too much offense and firepower, uh, the, and they'll get it done against Temple, Another, a team that is still, still learning. It's still a bit rusty, uh, I think. So give me the uh, Memphis Tigers to cover that 13-and-a-half number against Temple. Uh, Oklahoma at TCU. TCU catching six and the hook uh, at home in Fort Worth against Oklahoma. Um, whew, man, uh, I like TCU. In this one, I like them. Uh, one of the only teams in the Big 12 that plays a little bit of defense. Um, you know, they've already knocked off Texas this year. And um, Gary Patterson always has a solid ball club. They are sitting at one and two right now. Uh, a couple of tough losses. They lost to uh, Iowa State. And hmm, I'm drawing a blank on who else they lost to out there in the, uh, in the Big 12. May have been Oklahoma State. Uh, I'm not sure. It, but they, they're both of them have been relatively close games. And then they had the win over Texas. 
Uh, I like TCU here at home to cover six and a half uh, against an Oklahoma team that I mean, they really don't have anything to play for uh, playoff wise. I mean, they're not making it. That's just not happening for them this year. Uh, NC State uh, on the road at North Carolina. North Carolina's laying 15 at home uh, against NC State and um, rivalry situation. Now, I know NC State, um, they lost their quarterback, Devin Leary. So, Bailey Hockman will be uh, the signal caller uh, in this one, and I guess for the foreseeable future. Um, it's had some interceptions this year, uh, a couple of touchdown passes. Hatton exactly looked great. Uh, so, you know, maybe there's time on the bench. Uh, he's uh, been able to study things a little bit and maybe clean his game up a little bit. Uh, good team to do it against uh, in UNC. Um, you know, they don't play a lot of defense. And uh, 15 points to me is just a little bit, uh, a little bit too much in a, uh, a rivalry game. Uh, you know, UNC was ranked number five going into the Florida State game. I don't think anybody in the country thought that they were actually number five team in the country. Uh, defense, like I said, exposed. And um, that should give this young quarterback for NC State a little bit of confidence coming into this uh, game that he can uh, he can light up that secondary a little bit. They got a decent running game uh, to complement that. And uh, I think that NC State keeps it close. So let me take the Wolf Pack to cover here against UNC. Nebraska on the road at Ohio State. Ohio State laying 26 at home against Nebraska. Um, I think Ohio State's just going to play pissed off this year. And... Um, you know, focus. Uh, first game, though, uh, Nebraska, uh, you know, and Adrian Martinez, man, he had a huge sophomore slump last year. Uh, really didn't play well. It, one of the best games that he's played at Nebraska was as a freshman, a 26-21 loss to Ohio State. Um, I think that uh, they'll be looking to come out and make some kind of statement, too. Maybe they punch Ohio State in the mouth early. Real quick, you know, it's only going to be like a thousand close, uh, close friends and family uh, of these players here, and, and that's it. So, you know, a thousand people in the hundred thousand seat horseshoe. Uh, it's going to be a very strange environment. And uh, I like Nebraska. I just I like them to cover uh, this huge number uh, against Ohio State. Um, you know, Ohio State, you know, Justin Fields back, but still lost a little bit of the skill position talent off that playoff team from last year. Uh, so I think that uh, in the first game of the season, that Nebraska might do just enough to come in under that 26-point mark. Notre Dame on the road at Pitt. That might be my uh, you should have known better pick of the week. It might end up being that because we saw what kind of points that um, – Ohio State put up on the last year. I mean, just against everybody. But, I mean, this is, you know, this is the first game, underdog. Might as well try it there. Notre Dame uh, on the road at Pitt. Pitt is uh, catching 10 at home. This is going to be an ugly game. Uh, neither one of these offenses are very good at all. Uh, Ian Book uh, for Notre Dame. I mean, I think he's a good quarterback. He's a smart guy. But, I mean, he just doesn't have uh, – any receivers that are playmakers. I mean, really doesn't. That's a decent running back. And their defense is decent. Um, but Pitt's defense is decent as well. Um, but they struggled last week in the red zone against Miami. Uh, I think I heard the stats. They made it to the red zone like five times in that game and came away with four field goals. Uh, that's not good. I mean, you you can't – you got to be able to punch it in the end zone uh, more often than not if you're going to be uh, really successful – and I just think this is going to be an ugly game. Uh, and you could make the argument to say, well, Notre Dame had their ugly game last week against Louisville. Yeah, but what do they have to, to that's going to make them any significantly better this week than they did were last week? They haven't impressed me at all this season. So I'm going to take Pitt to cover that 10 points here. I think they keep this thing really close, and um, I think it could come down to like last possession. They're ranked number three in the country. Notre Dame is another team that there are so many teams that are that are ranked high, um, just like North Carolina was last week. They just really don't, just don't deserve to be there. 
uh, in my opinion. But, I mean, looking at it, I mean, right now, I mean, who are you going to put in their place? That's what you got to be able to answer. Okay, a few uh, mid-major games. UTEP on the road at Charlotte. Uh, UTEP is uh, catching 14 and the hook uh, at the uh, Jerry Richardson Stadium against the Charlotte 49ers. Uh, Charlotte, young coach Will Healy, uh, looked pretty good um, so far this year. Um, they're another team that's uh, missed a few games as well. UTEP has not looked bad this year. They're 3-2 and two right now, currently with a winning record. Um, they probably haven't went this deep into a season uh, with a winning record since, oh, I don't know, the early 70s. I would venture to say it, it's probably been a long time. They have kind of a kind of a methodical uh, type offense. It just kind of kind of chews up clock and uh, is kind of a ball control type thing. And uh, I think that they could stretch this game out, uh, you know, just long enough to uh, you know keep Charlotte's offense off the field. Uh, for the majority of it. They play the, that time of possession uh, type game. And 14 and the hook, I think that UTEP could possibly cover this number there. Last week you saw them go on the road. They played a pretty good Louisiana Tech team, uh, and uh, they lost, uh, but 21-17, uh, keeping it pretty close there. And, and once again, Louisiana Tech, a, a team that's, that's not afraid to put some points on the board, and um, they couldn't do it. Just couldn't do it against UTEP because they couldn't get their offense on the field enough. So give me the minors to cover against Charlotte here and keep it under that 14 and a half. Middle Tennessee on the road at Rice. Rice is laying three and a hook uh, at home in Houston. Uh, this is their first game uh, of the season. Uh, and Middle Tennessee comes in. Um, they're, they're just not very good. Uh, gotten blown out a couple of times this year. Uh, they've lost their uh, Conference USA games. Uh, they did manage to uh, squeeze out uh, one victory uh, earlier this season. But um, they've just largely looked kind of bad. Uh, their quarterback, Asher O'Hara, is a dual threat guy. Um, and he's more dangerous with his feet than he is with his arm. He's uh, kind of thrown, thrown some picks around and, and that type of stuff. Uh, and Rice, just, just a solid team. Uh, they come in uh, with 17 returning starters, okay? A uh, couple of first-team All-Conference uh, USA selections at running back, or excuse me, at linebacker, uh, which, I mean, you know, uh, when have you ever been able to say that about Rice? They started off 0-9 last year, and then they went on a, a bit of a run, and they won their last three. And a lot of those nine losses were really close games. So their, their record was really not a good indicator of, you know, of how good the team actually was. I mean, no mistake about it. I mean, they weren't a good team. But they weren't 0-9 they weren't awful. They weren't 0-9 awful. So I'm going to take them here uh, to cover against Middle Tennessee. Um, no, they haven't played yet this year, but they got plenty of film. They have plenty of time to study uh, the Blue Raiders and what their scheme is and what their – what their little angle is they're going to try to come in with. Uh, give me Rice in this game to get the win at home. Uh, Baylor on the road at Texas. Texas is laying nine at home uh, against Baylor. Uh, Sam Ellinger's looked pretty decent this year, but uh, uh, Texas, you know, it's just you know, kind of in trouble a little bit. Um, Tom Herman squarely on the hot seat there. Here you're taking on a Baylor team that's uh, – uh, went to double overtime, I think, last time out with West Virginia. Um, they've blown out Kansas, kind of had some games canceled this year as well. Um, nine points at home for Texas doesn't seem like a lot to me. And, yeah, yeah after, of all the upheaval and stuff this week and all the stuff, uh, with Herman being talked about being on the hot seat, I think Texas might come out with a little bit of an edge in this one and play pretty well and uh, kind of get an easy victory, you know, against a Baylor team that's still with new coach Dave Aranda. It's still kind of trying to find its way. It's it's not the same team that, uh, you know, just barely missed out on a Big 12 championship last year. 
uh, under Matt Rule. I mean, they lost a lot of players there. Um, so I'm going to take Texas here to cover this number and uh, hope and pray that I'm right on that one. Virginia Tech on the road at Wake Forest. Uh, Virginia Tech is uh, catching nine uh, and the hook against uh, – uh, no, they're laying nine in the hook, excuse me, against Wake Forest on the road. Um, Tech, uh, with a pretty impressive win last week against Boston College, and they looked pretty impressive offensively against uh, UNC the week before. I think they're starting to come into their own a little bit here. Uh, I think that they'll be able to score some points on Wake Forest, and uh, I think they cover that number. Here I go trying to circle the wrong team again. Give me the Hokies to cover the nine and a half against Wake Forest. I think they'll win by a couple of touchdowns. Penn State on the road to Indiana. Penn State is uh, laying five and a half on the road in Bloomington against uh, Michael Penix and the uh, Indiana Hoosiers. A lot of people like Indiana, man. A lot of people are jumping on them here. Uh, you know, Penn State with, uh, you know, Michael Parsons opt out. Um, the uh, Journey Brown, the running back, probably not going to play this year. Um, but they've still got some. They still got some athletes. Uh, they've lost a lot defensively, but they recruited at a high level. Um, Indiana is not a bad football team at all. Um, and this one is. It's kind of tough. It's. It's. You know, the the, the series has normally been uh, a lot closer than you would think, just given the record. Uh, looking at these two teams uh, and how they match up and, uh, and how they've ended up the seasons. You, you know, these games have been a lot closer than what you would think. I still got to back the Penn State Nittany Lions here. You know, the five and a half, you know, you're under a touchdown there. I think that, uh, you know, just the superior talent uh, and athletes uh, that Penn State possesses will be able to pull this thing out in the fourth quarter and, uh, you know, win the thing by 7 to 10 points, and they'll cover that, uh, that short number there. <sighs> South Carolina on the road at LSU. South Carolina is um, catching six on the road in Baton Rouge against LSU. Uh, this will be a night game in Tiger Stadium, the first one of the year. And you know, Ed Orgeron said there'll be like 21,000 Tiger fans there. I'm not buying that. I bet you there's like forty or 50,000 there, kind of like what we saw at Texas A&M and Alabama this past week. I don't think any of these people are following the rules to the letter on that. Doesn't matter, though. Not here to try to make excuses. Um, Gamecocks got a, a big boost uh, a couple of days ago. Jalen Brooks, wide receiver, transferred in from uh, Tarleton State and Wingate College, uh, was cleared by the NCAA to play. And I think they are. They're they're going to clear all these people that that are got these uh these this this transfer stuff up there because after this you know it's the first year they're going to make everybody eligible for another year. So I mean, why not let somebody transfer in? It doesn't make any sense. It's stupid that they the kid had to wait until game number five of the season to be able to play. It really made me mad when they uh kind of just like they just refused to uh, like even hear his case. I guess, but. Uh, so they finally have, and I uh, finally said Mr. Brooks can play. Um, I think that that will have an effect uh, down the road on our season. I mean, he's another guy. Um, he's uh, a, a threat uh, to catch some deep balls downfield, kind of take the top off the of defense a little bit. So um, that's good news for Carolina. Um, the bad news is... You know, LSU lost that first game to Mississippi State. I think that was kind of a, you know, what the hell type moment. And, and really didn't know what had happened there. Just kind of got shell-shocked a little bit. And I don't think reality with them actually set in until they lost to Missouri two weeks ago. And it, it kind of set in, hey, you know what, we really do suck. Our defense is really bad. And uh, we need to uh, we need to fix it. I don't think Ed Orgeron is that great of a football coach. I just, I just don't. Um, you know, that can be an unpopular opinion. You know, you can agree with me if you want. 
disagree with you if you don't. I think last year he just had the right mix of coordinators and some excellent talent. I'd say he was not a good recruiter, and I think he's a good motivator. Um, you know, I think he's a, a guy that's loyal to LSU. I just don't think that, you know, uh, as far as X's and O's goes, I don't think he's the smartest uh, uh, or, sh or the sharpest tool in the shed as far as that goes. I think Will Muschamp is probably a better X's and O's guy than uh, Ed Orgeron. Ed, Ed is maybe, yeah, a little bit better of a motivator than uh, like a, a Muschamp is. I think he rallies the troops here. I think he does, and I think he knows that you know the season that you're not you're not making the playoffs, but you know you still have a chance to to finish it strong if you can get it together. And maybe you know you only have a loss to Alabama coming, and uh, you know you could finish up at like seven and three, and um, that would be a huge turnaround for LSU. I, I think that they that they rally the troops there, and. This is inevitably, it could not set up better for the Gamecocks. Could not set up better. LSU is starting a true freshman quarterback named T.J. Finley. He's never taken a snap in college. Um, you know, the, 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 the secondary looks like a mess of Swiss cheese. And you know, things are just, just looking bleak for them. But I think we lose this game. I think we drop it by 10 to 14 points. And... Um, once again, I love my team, but I just have to be realistic. And, and I understand more than anybody that our head coach is incompetent. He is incompetent. And there, at some point during the season, every year, he is going to drop a big chunky deuce on the 50-yard line. And this, I think, is the situation where he does it, where everything is set up perfectly for us to win this game. I think Will drops a deuce on this one, and I think LSU covers the spread and wins this game. I'm sorry that's the way I feel. That, that That's just the way I feel about this one. I think they get it together defensively a little bit against us, uh, give us a little bit of a hard time. You know, we've already seen the Gamecocks kind of have some trouble stopping people. We saw it against Florida. And another indictment on us, look how bad Jarek Garantano for uh, – Tennessee has played the last two weeks against Georgia, a really good defense, against Kentucky, a really good defense. They forced mistake after mistake after mistake from this fumble uh, to interceptions, to pick sixes. They forced all kinds of mistakes on this guy. South Carolina couldn't get the ball off of him, couldn't get the ball off of him. He played great against South Carolina. Maybe not great, but he played great enough to win. And, you know, how we lost to them, I'll never know. Um, you know, the Florida loss is, was – that game should have been a lot closer than what it was uh, with that 38-24 uh, score. Um, and that Tennessee game, that should have been a win. It, that should have been a win looking back at how their season has gone so far and what they're, what the, what they're bringing to the table. So those are some kind of indictments on the Gamecocks a little bit there. Michigan on the road at Minnesota. Minnesota is catching three at home uh, against Michigan. I think this is the wrong side. I, I think that Minnesota, you know, they, they, the game opened up, Minnesota was favored, and then everybody rushes to the window to bet Michigan. I just, I just don't see it. You're going to have some really bad weather. Uh, we already have had some in uh, Minneapolis this week and this weekend, and – you know, the, the quarterback, Tanner Morgan, they got coming out, and, and they got some really um, – a really good shot arm when um, uh, their wide receiver uh, that had opted out over the summer, uh, opted back in for uh, Minnesota. That was huge. That was huge. Um, P.J. Fleck, great young mind, uh, great young coach. Uh, I think he get the job done here. Uh, against Michigan at home. You saw them beat, um, who was it? Uh, took down Penn State last year, late in the year at home. And I think if they uh, take down Michigan here, I think this uh, Rashad Bateman is his name. He did that just off, off the tip of my tongue. I think this is uh, another chance for them to make a, uh, a huge splash here, uh, taking down another one of the uh, so-called big boys uh, of the Big Ten. So give me Minnesota to cover the 
cover that spread. Uh, I think they got the wrong ones favored there, and I think they won that game. Um, and Virginia on the road at Miami. Miami uh, is a 12-and-a-half point favorites at home against Virginia. Um, Virginia has not looked especially great uh, the past couple of weeks. Um, they didn't last week against Wake Forest. Kind of got blown out a little bit uh, on the road at Wake. Uh, here we got to turn back around and go to Miami. Um, Miami didn't... They covered the spread last week, and, and they were okay against Pittsburgh, but uh, you know that defense kind of gave them a little bit of problems at some points here. I, I think Virginia's defense, you know, not quite what uh, not quite what Pittsburgh's is. Um, Twelve and a half points. It's not a lot here. Uh, Virginia, I think, is kind of their stock's kind of dropping a little bit, in my opinion. So I'm going to take the favorites, the home team here. Uh, the Miami Hurricanes to cover that 12 and a half point spread. So there it is, guys. My 20 uh, picks and predictions against the spread for week number eight of the college football season. As I said earlier, please hit this with a thumbs up and a subscription to the Carolina Jackpot channel. If you have not done so already, we are at like 8,300 subs and it just keeps climbing higher and higher and higher and higher and higher every day. It's kind of like the little Price is Right, the little Swedish yodeler guy that was going up the mountain. We want him to keep going. We want him to keep going. We want him to find the tallest Swiss Alp and just keep climbing that subscription hill until he reaches the top of it. And Carolina Jackpot just can't get no more subscribers. There's just not no more to get. And there's a lot of mountain left to climb. There is definitely a lot there left to climb. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you all later. Peace, and I'm out of here. Go Gamecocks.